Hey, welcome back. I'm Daniel, and in this video, which is probably going to be a little shorter, we're going to talk about type inference, about what the compiler is able to figure out when we don't specify types explicitly. We've seen type inference a little bit in action in our code earlier in the earlier videos, but I also want you to get a more solid understanding of it in theory. So we saw in our code then when we don't specify a type for a value or a variable, the compiler will try to figure it out for us. So in this case, the value message has the value of a string. So the compiler looks at the right hand side and says, okay, this is this this is a string, so the type of message must also be a string. All that being said, the compiler will then write a complete value definition for us without needing us to specify the type string explicitly. This is a one step operation, but the compiler is able to do many, many steps in order to determine the correct type of our values. So in this example, we have two uh, values X and Y for which we have not specified any type, but the compiler is able to progressively determine the type of each. So uh, for the value x, the compiler is able to figure out that it's an int from the right-hand side, and for the value y, having determined the type of x first, it will look at the right-hand side and will say int plus a string, well that is a string concatenation, so the result is a string, so the type of y is also a string. Alright, so we've seen this in practice, but uh, what you're seeing on screen right now is a more visual representation of what the compiler actually does behind the scenes. This is important. Right Now, the compiler is also able to figure out the return types of functions by looking at their implementations. So if I, for example, define this little successor function which uh, returns the next integer, the compiler is able to look at the implementation, figure out that the resulting expression returns, in this case, an int, so it's able to figure out that the return type of this function is int. So behind the scenes, the compiler actually writes the complete function signature with the return type completely specified without me needing to write it explicitly. But if you do specify a type, make sure that you conform to it on the right hand side because otherwise the compiler will buzz you with an error. In this case, I'm declaring a value of type int but give it a string on the right hand side. The compiler still does type inference behind the scenes to do a type check. So the compiler is expecting an int, but on the right hand side, the compiler figures out that the return expression is a string. So it confuses the compiler and it throws an error in your face called a type mismatch. But sometimes the compiler is not able to figure out all the return types on its own. So with our little recursive factorial function here as an example, the compiler is not able to figure out the return type here. Let's just assume that it tries to. So as we said before, determining the return type of the function means determining the return type of its implementation expression, which in this case is an if expression, which has two branches. So the compiler has to analyze both. The first branch returns an integer, which is fine. The other branch returns a product between an int, which is also fine, and the recursive call of factorial of whose type the compiler is not aware. So it will try to figure out the return type of this other factor by looking at the return type of the factorial function, which is what it was trying to find in the first place, which confuses the compiler. And the compiler will throw an error in your face when it does that. All right, this is Daniel. This was a short video, but I hope you got a good visual representation of the process that the compiler runs when it tries to determine the types that we as lazy scholar programmers often emit. The programmer is an incredibly powerful tool and we'll get more intimate with it as we get more experienced with Scala. In the meantime, I can't wait to see you in the next video.